Morty. That cap may be the only thing charming enough to distract some tentacled monstrosity from ripping our faces off. Jerry, wearing a hat. Hey guys, what's with all the cap talk? Oh, it's just Morty overthinking, as usual. Say, Jerry, that's a nice hat. Where'd you get it? The bargain bin emporium for fashion disasters. Ha ha. Very funny, Rick. It's actually a designer hat. You wouldn't understand, being stuck in that lab all day. Oh please, Jerry, I've seen more fashion faux pas in other dimensions than you could ever imagine. Beth, entering, wearing a sweater. Oh, so now we're discussing fashion? I see why I'm needed here. Summer, sarcastically. Yeah, because without a fashion consultant, the world would fall into chaos. Hey, leave your mother alone, Summer. Speaking of chaos, I heard Rick sent you to jail for using fourth wall breaking powers. Is that true? You know, Jerry, sometimes you surprise me with your knowledge of my interdimensional shenanigans. But yes, I sent him to the Slamsville Galactic Penitentiary. It was getting irritating, breaking the fourth wall every five minutes. Wait, what's fourth wall breaking? And how did dad do it? Morty, it's when a character acknowledges they're in a fictional story, like a TV show or a movie. And as for how Jerry did it, well, he has the uncanny ability to ruin everything, even reality itself. So, what's the plan now? Break him out? Oh, I say we let him rot there for a while. It might do him some good to think about his life choices. Can we at least visit him and make fun of his inmate fashion choices? I like the way you think, Summer. We'll plan a prison break, Morty style. Sneak in, cause a riot, and boom. Jerry's a free man. Guys, I'm standing right here, you know. Trust me, Jerry, it's much more fun to talk about you when you're not around. Jerry, muttering, story of my life. Okay, let's get this over with. But remember, Rick, if anything bad happens, it's on you. Oh, Beth, when have I ever caused anything bad to happen? Oh, remember that time you turned yourself into a pickle and... Morty, not now. We have a prison break to plan. Yeah, let's save the interdimensional family drama for later. Prison break, here we come. Much later, at the Slam Seville Galactic Penitentiary. Guard, hold up there, folks. No unauthorized visitors allowed. Oh really? Watch this. Pulls out portal gun and creates a portal behind the guard. Guard. Whoa, what the? See y'all later, sucker. Rick, Morty, Beth, Summer, and Jerry step through the portal, leaving the guard bewildered. Wow, that was easy. Maybe prison isn't so bad after all. Oh, don't worry, Jerry. We'll find a way to make your life just as miserable as it was before. Yeah, Jerry. You can't escape your destiny as the universe's punching bag. Great, just what I wanted to hear. Can't wait for the next nail in my existential coffin. Come on, guys, let's just get this over with. We still have to go shoe shopping after this. Seriously, Mom? Shoe shopping? I thought we were saving Dad. Well, a woman's got to have priorities, Summer. And cute shoes are at the top of my list. I'll never understand you women and your obsession with footwear. Let's just retrieve Jerry and get out of here before anything else goes wrong. Meanwhile, chaos erupts within the prison as an inmate rebellion breaks out. Inmate number one. Hey, look, it's the Smith family. Let's take them hostage. Inmate number two. Yeah, and we'll demand a pardon from the galactic president. Or maybe a pizza party. Both sound pretty cool. Oh great, more idiots. Just what I needed. Dad, what do we do? They're coming right at us. Morty, I have a PhD in escaping impossible situations. Follow my lead. Mayhem ensues as Rick, Morty, Beth, Summer, and Jerry fight their way out of the prison, leaving a trail of unconscious inmates behind. I can't believe it. We made it out alive. Surviving impossible situations is sort of our thing, Jerry. Now let's get out of here before the guards figure out what happened. Moments later, the Smith family escapes through another portal, back to the safety of their home. Well, that was eventful. I think I need a drink after that. Don't we all, Beth? Don't we all? So, Dad, any chance we'll have a normal adventure next time? Morty, there's no such thing as a normal adventure when you're with me. Get used to the chaos, kid. Can't argue with that. Chaos is our middle name. 
I thought our middle name was embarrassment. Touche, Jerry, touche.
Bob, holding a ball. Hey Patrick, watch this. I'm gonna kick the ball and make it bounce off the ceiling. Patrick laughs. Oh, Bob, you never cease to amaze me with your crazy ideas. Bob kicks the ball with immense force. Woohoo! Look at that height. Patrick gasps. Bob, it's going straight for the chandelier. Bob, nervous laugh. Oops, Patrick. Maybe I underestimated my strength. The ball crashes into the chandelier, breaking it and causing it to fall to the ground. Patrick. Holy shit, Bob. That was intense. We better fix it before SpongeBob gets back. Bob. Damn it, Patrick. You're right. Let's get our thinking caps on and find a solution. They hurriedly start picking up the broken pieces of the chandelier. Bob. Wait, Patrick, have you seen the duct tape? Patrick. Searching. Uh, no, Bob. But hey, look, there's a super glue bottle under the couch. Bob, relieved. Great find, Patrick. Hand it over, quick. Patrick hands over the super glue, and Bob starts frantically repairing the broken chandelier. Bob, muttering to himself, come on, you stupid pieces, stick together. Patrick, looking around nervously, Bob, do you hear that? Bob, concentrating, hear what, Patrick? I'm trying to save our asses here. The sound of SpongeBob's laughter fills the room. Patrick, that's SpongeBob. He's back. SpongeBob enters the room, a cheerful smile on his face. SpongeBob, hey guys, what are you up to? Bob, with fake enthusiasm. Hey, SpongeBob. We decided to do some home improvement while you were gone. Patrick, yeah, and we wanted to surprise you. Check out the shiny, new chandelier. SpongeBob, impressed, wow, you guys are the best friends ever, but I gotta ask, why are you both covered in sweat? Bob, nervously laughs, um, we were just working really hard, you know. Home improvement can be intense. SpongeBob, raises an eyebrow, alright if you say so, well, I'll go make us some Krabby Patties. Bob and Patrick breathe a sigh of relief as SpongeBob leaves the room. Patrick, phew, that was a close one, Bob, we really dodged a bullet there. Bob. Wiping sweat off his forehead. No kidding, Patrick. Let's make sure to keep our crazy adventures a secret next time. The two friends high-five each other and continue cleaning up the mess they created. Despite the chaotic situation and the imminent danger of getting caught, Bob and Patrick managed to pull off a remarkable cover-up, saving themselves from SpongeBob's wrath. Their bond and quick thinking proved to be their saviors in this outrageous and M-rated episode of Cartoon Madness.
Homer looks at Bart with wide eyes. Boy, what are you doing with that coffee? Bart, smirking, mind your own business, old man. Homer grabs Bart's coffee. That's mine, you little twerp. Bart, frowns, give it back, you fat oaf. Homer laughs, not before I take a sip. Bart tries to snatch the coffee back, but spills it all over the floor. Bart, oh, great, now look what you made me do. Homer, mockingly, ah, poor little baby made a mess. Bart, shut up, you dumbass. Just then, Lisa enters the room and sees the mess. Lisa, what the hell is going on here? Bart, angrily, dad stole my coffee and spilled it. Homer, defensively, he started it, Lisa. Lisa, rolls her eyes, honestly, you two never cease to amaze me. Marge walks in, witnessing the chaos. Marge, oh my god, what's happening? Bart, pointing at Homer, he ruined my breakfast. Homer, pointing at Bart, he provoked me, Marge. Marge, frustrated, can we not have a single morning without drama? Loud crash sounds from upstairs. Bart, wide-eyed, oh, what was that? Homer, panicking, I think it came from the bathroom. They all rush upstairs and find Maggie covered in toilet paper. Maggie, giggling with toilet paper in her mouth, goo goo gaga. -ga. Lisa, laughing, well, there's our little troublemaker. Marge, exasperated, can we please just have a normal day? Homer, nervously, what's normal, anyway? Bart, smirking, boring, dad, boring. They all laugh together, realizing that crazy antics are just part of their normal life. Though it began with a spilled cup of coffee and escalated into chaos, the incident served as a reminder that the Simpson family is anything but ordinary. Their wild and unpredictable nature keeps them bonded in a rather unconventional way. Life may be chaotic, but it's also filled with love and laughter, making their crazy adventures all the more worth it. Warning, the following dialogue script contains adult content and language. Reader discretion is advised. Title, A Wild Night in Springfield. Characters. 1. Homer Simpson. 2. Marge Simpson. 3. Bart Simpson. 4. Ned Flanders. 5. Chief Wiggum. 6. Mo Shislik. 7. Krusty the Clown. 8. Selma Bouvier. Int. Simpson's living room, night. Homer sits on the couch, watching TV with a beer in his hand. Homer. Belching. Ah, life is good, Marge. Marge enters, looking concerned. Marge. Homer, Bart didn't come home from school today. Have you seen him? Homer. Shrugging. Nah, probably just out causing trouble somewhere. Int. Skate park, afternoon, flashback. Bart is skateboarding, performing impressive tricks. A crowd gathers to watch. Bart, showing off, hey, losers, watch this. As Bart reaches the climax of his trick, he flies off the ramp and into the square frame hanging above. Int. Springfield General Hospital, night. Bart lies in a hospital bed, bandages covering his body. Mo, Chief Wiggum, and Krusty stand by his bedside. Oh, grinning. Look at little Bart Simpson over here, spreading his special brand of chaos. Chief Wiggum, chuckles, he sure knows how to keep us in business. Krusty sprays Bart with a flower squirter, causing him to jump up in pain. Bart, yelling, what the hell, Krusty, that hurts, you dumb clown. Int. Flanders, living room, night. Ned Flanders arrives at the door with a casserole dish. Ned Flanders, worried, gosh diddly darn, I heard about the accident. I brought a casserole, Marge. Int. Hospital room, continuous. Ned enters Bart's room and sees Selma Bouvier sitting there. Selma, smirking, well, if it isn't Nettie Boy, looking for some consolation. 
Ned looks uncomfortable, but eventually, they both start making out passionately. Int. Moe's Tavern, Late Night. Homer sits at the bar, drowning his sorrows. Homer. Slurring. My son's in the hospital, Mo. What am I gonna do? Mo, feeling guilty, reveals a secret. Oh, whispering, Homer, it was me. I rigged that square frame at the skate park. I wanted to see if anyone would get hurt. Homer. Enraged, you son of a bleep and bleep. I'm gonna bleep and kill you. Int. Mo's tavern, continuous. Homer lunges at Mo, throwing wild punches and knocking over bar stools. Chaos ensues as everyone tries to break up the fight. Int. Springfield Police Station, morning. Chief Wiggum holds an ice pack to his bruised face while Mo sits handcuffed in a nearby cell. Chief Wiggum, grumbling, officially, Homer, it's not legal to rig a skate park frame. But keep your hands off Mo before you end up in here too. Homer storms out of the police station, determined to find another way to seek vengeance. Int. Springfield Elementary School, Day. Homer barges into Bart's classroom, startling Mrs. Krabappel. Homer. Furious, Bart. You're grounded for life, and we're moving to Shelbyville. Mrs. Krabappel tries to intervene. But Homer drags Bart out of the room as Marge watches, conflicted. Marge. To herself. Maybe moving to Shelbyville wouldn't be such a bad idea after all. Note, the above script was created in response to the given prompt and should be considered as a fictional, comical, and exaggerated scenario. The Simpsons is a registered trademark of 20th Century Fox Film Corporation. This script is not intended for commercial use or publication. David, squatting down, holding a bottle of water. Damn, this line for the bathroom is taking forever. Samantha, walking by. Hey, what's taking you so long in there? David, frustrated. The damn bathroom is occupied, and I can't hold it anymore. Samantha, laughing. It's all right, just hold on a little longer. David, in pain. No, I don't think I can. It's an emergency. Samantha, pointing. Look, there's a secluded alley over there. I don't know if that's your best option, but it might work. David. Desperate. Fine, I'll give it a shot. Just hope nobody sees me. As David makes his way to the alley, a loud fart can be heard. Alex, passing by, dude, what was that noise? David. Embarrassed, it was just some, uh, backfire. Don't worry about it. Alex, mischievous grin, dude, did you just... David. Blushing. Yeah, I. I kinda shat myself. Alex, laughing uncontrollably, oh man, this is priceless. How did that even happen? David. Angrily, I don't know, Alex. It was a perfect storm of bad timing and a weak sphincter. As people start to notice David's mishap, the crowd gathers and begins to spread the word. Brandon Stranger, whispering, hey, have you heard about the guy who shat himself in the alley? It's all over social media now. News Reporter holding microphone. This is breaking news. We have an exclusive on the man who had an unfortunate accident in public. Stay tuned for the interview. David. Panicking. How did this become such a big deal? It's just one accident. Samantha, comforting. Don't worry, David. We'll get through this. Just take a deep breath. As the days go by, David's story becomes an internet sensation with memes, parodies, and even a dedicated hashtag trending globally. David. Frustrated, I can't believe the whole world knows about my accident. This is so humiliating. Samantha. Supportive. Look at the bright side, David. At least people are laughing with you, not at you. David. Sighing, I guess you have a point. It could have been worse. Several months later, as David is walking down the street, he notices someone who looks familiar. David. Curious. Hey, aren't you that random stranger who spread the news about my accident? Random stranger. Nervously. Yeah, I am. I just wanted to apologize for blowing it out of proportion. David. Smiling. Apology accepted. 
I've learned to laugh at myself, and it's actually made me stronger. Brandon Stranger, grateful, I'm glad to hear that. You've become such an icon of resilience and humor. As David walks away, he realizes that despite the embarrassing incident, he has grown as a person and gained a new perspective on life.
Ordi, buckle up, we're going on a one-way trip to Castle Bonkers. Castle Bonkers? What the hell is that, Rick? It's a dimension where swords and castles are all the rage, Morty. Get ready for some medieval madness. Wait, so you're telling me we're going to a dimension where people still swing swords? That's Sue last millennium. Yeah, well, your so 21st century attitude is really grinding my gears, Summer. Just go along with it. Rick, what's the plan here? We're gonna confront the man with the damn sword standing next to that fancy castle on the hill, Morty. Oh, Rick, there's like 20 guys with swords there. How are we gonna do that? Trust me, Morty, I've got a plan. We'll distract them with a birdie. Bird? Huh? Seriously, Rick? A bird? Shut up, Summer. You're just mad because Jerry wants some fucking peace and quiet. Jerry, screaming from the spaceship. Can I just have one goddamn moment of tranquility? Ah, shut up, Jerry. We're busy. Um, Rick, the guys with swords are charging at us. No worries, Morty. Activate the medieval mayhem mode. Medieval mayhem mode? Is that a thing? Of course it is. What do you think I've been working on all day? Rick, this is insane. I bet you're making this up on the spot. Oh really, Summer? Watch this. Suddenly, the spaceship transforms into a giant robot knight, equipped with laser swords. Holy crap, Rick! You created a giant robot knight! That's right, Morty. And now, let's show these medieval meatheads what we're made of. Sound of clashing swords and laser beams. Looks like they're having fun. Maybe I should join them. Shut up, Jerry. No one wants you ruining this. Let's just sit back and enjoy the show. Sounds of explosions and Rick's maniacal laughter. This is totally insane, Rick. We're winning. Of course we are, Morty. My genius has no bounds. All right, let's wrap this up, Rick. Castle Bonkers is getting a bit too bonkers for my taste. Fine, fine. I'll just initiate the return to normalcy protocol. Spaceship transforms back into its regular form. That was crazy, Rick. But hey, at least we saved the day. Yeah, yeah, Morty. Just remember, in the vast multiverse, there's always gonna be some place crazier than the last. Now, let's go home before the king wants revenge or some shit. They fly away, leaving chaos and confusion in their wake. Thank God, it's finally quiet. Shut up, Jerry. You just missed the coolest adventure ever. Oh great, another ridiculous adventure, Morty. What are we doing this time? I don't know, Rick. All I see is a cartoon character being chased by another character with some weird caption. Jerry May 3rd, Trey 800 Kanu. What does that even mean? Morty, we're in a cartoon world, so logic doesn't apply. Just embrace the chaos. Besides, who needs logic when you have interdimensional cable? Rick, I don't care about your interdimensional cable right now. Morty broke his ankles while trying to stab Jerry. Can you fix him? Morty, is this true? You tried to stab me? I knew you were a little punk. Shut up, Jerry. I was just defending myself, and obviously, I failed miserably. Morty, what did I tell you about attacking people without a plan? Now let's get those ankles fixed. But first, Beth, can you bring me the Jerry repellent? What? There's a Jerry repellent? How come nobody ever told me about it? Oh, don't worry, Jerry. It doesn't exist. Dad is just making things up to mess with you. That's right, Beth. But speaking of things that don't exist, Morty, I recommend we watch some terrible 80s movies to distract ourselves from our impending doom. Oh, I think fixing my ankles should be the priority here, Rick. Morty, priorities are subjective. Now, let's see. How about we start with Mannequin 2 on the move? Dad, could you please focus on Morty's ankles? And why are you recommending terrible movies instead of doing something useful? Beth, trust me, 
Sometimes the best way to distract ourselves from a dire situation is to lose ourselves in terrible cinema. It's a proven scientific fact. Can we please skip the movie marathon for now and fix my ankles? I can't walk. Oh, poor little Morty can't walk? What a shame. Maybe if you weren't so clumsy, this wouldn't have happened. Shut your mouth, Jerry. I swear, if these ankles weren't broken, I would. Morty, calm down. No need to exert yourself. We'll fix your ankles. And just between us, Jerry, nobody likes you. Not even in this fictional cartoon world. Rick, can you please just fix Morty's ankles already? Fine, fine. Pass me that sci-fi wrench, Morty. I'll whip up something amazing that will fix you up in no time. Thanks, Rick. And Jerry, if you ever come near me again, I'll make sure that cartoon caption becomes a reality for you. Oh, like you could even harm a fly. Nice threats, Morty. All right, Morty, hold still. This might sting a little, but it'll fix you right up. In the meantime, let's continue our movie marathon. How about Howard the Duck? Ah, oh, fine. But I hope this movie marathon distracts me from the fact that I can't walk and Jerry's still being a jerk. Morty, in this chaotic world, distraction is all we have. Let's lose ourselves in the wonders of terrible 80s cinema. Deny the pain. Embrace the absurdity. Alright Morty, listen up. We're headed to a dimension where everyone has a never-ending supply of strawberry ice cream. I call it, Strawberry-topia. Whoa, really? Ice cream for everyone? Sounds pretty sweet, Rick. Sweet, Morty. This is a dimension where they literally swim in strawberry ice cream. It's about to get sticky. Dad, are you seriously taking Morty to some ridiculous, ice cream-filled dimension? Beth, please. I have a PhD in ridiculousness. This is serious scientific exploration. Ah, excuse me? Can I come too? I'm totally up for some free ice cream. Fine, Summer. But remember, there's always a price for free ice cream. Always. Whispering to Beth, do you think Rick is hiding something from us? Morty, you know Rick is always hiding something. Just enjoy the ride. They arrive in Strawberrytopia, where mountains of ice cream stretch as far as the eye can see. Behold, my strawberry empire. It's just like I remember it. Delicious and unsettlingly erotic. Jordy, and what do we have here? A bunch of idiots in a dimension full of ice cream. Can't resist a taste, huh? Who's this guy, and why is he waving that sword around? Jordy, name's Shorty, buddy. Any fool who enters Strawberrytopia has to deal with me and my sword. Ain't no free ice cream in this world. Bursts out laughing. Oh boy, this guy. Morty, we didn't account for the Lord of the Ice Cream scenario. Typical. Are you seriously laughing when there's a sword being swung around? Whispering to Morty, you think Rick and Shorty are secretly friends? Whispering to Summer, I wouldn't put it past Rick. They're probably planning something crazy. All right, Shorty, what do you want? We just came here for some ice cream. Not a medieval fight. Jordy, ice cream for me. Morty is my prisoner, and Beth, as my queen. Rolls her eyes, seriously? Fine, Shorty, but you better deliver that ice cream to us, or I swear I'll show you the deadliest weapon in the universe. Jordy, laughs, oh please, what could be deadlier than my sword? Rick pulls out his portal gun and opens a wormhole to a dimension with a giant, fire-breathing dragon. Eat my friend. Scorchy, say hello, buddy. Scorchy, belches fire. Hello, puny mortals. Jordy, drops his sword. Okay, okay, ice cream for everyone, including the dragon. They all dig into the ice cream mountains, each with a smile on their face. I can't believe we just had to deal with a sword-wielding lunatic to get some ice cream. Jordy, life is full of crazy adventures and improbable scenarios. Science is just the cherry on top. What's the deal with the dragon, Rick? Oh, just another day in the life of a mad scientist, Summer. Now, who's up for a second round of ice cream?
40. You gotta listen to me this time. We're gonna be the AS's blaster generals of this dimension. AS's blaster generals? Rick, are you serious? What the hell does that even mean? Oh Morty, you sweet summer child. The AS's blaster general is the highest rank one can achieve in the interdimensional chaos brigade. It's like being the king of the shit show, Morty. Ah, oh, fine. But only if we don't have to, you know, actually blast any asses. No promises, Morty. No promises. Now let's get to work. I need your delicate Morty touch for this one. What are we even supposed to do, Rick? We're gonna set up a portal device in the city's sewage system. Once activated, it'll shoot poop-filled portals randomly all over the place. Chaos and hilarity shall ensue. Oh god, Rick. I don't think I can handle that. Of course, you can't, Morty. That's why we're doing it. Now buckle up, Morty, and put on your AS's blaster suit. AS's blaster suit? You've got to be kidding me. No time for jokes, Morty. Our credibility as AS's blaster generals is at stake here. This is insane, Rick. We're gonna end up on interdimensional FBI's most wanted list. Morty, who cares about that? We're wanted in so many dimensions. We could start our own reality TV show. Let's do this. Okay, but if we end up in jail again, I'm blaming you. Fair enough, Morty. Now, activate the poop portal device while I suit up. It's ass blasting time. I can't believe I'm actually doing this. They activate the device and portals start opening, releasing poop-filled chaos all over the city. Approaching. Hey, what's going on here? I'm just trying to get my car fixed and there's poop raining from the sky. Jerry, shut up. Can't you see we're busy ass blasting? Ass blasting? What the hell is ass blasting? It's a long story, Jerry. Just stay out of our way, okay? Fine, fine. But next time you two decide to cause mayhem, at least give a guy a heads up. They continue ass blasting. Some citizens join in. Chaos ensues. Arriving. Oh my god. What's happening here? Summer. Perfect timing. Get your ass blasting gear on. We need all the help we can get. Seriously, Grandpa? Do I even have a choice? Nope. Ass blasting is a family affair, Summer. They all continue ass blasting. City turns into a chaotic mess of laughter and poop. Entering. What the hell is wrong with you people? This is our city. Beth. Perfect timing. I was just about to offer you the coveted position of Mother AS's blaster. You're insane, Rick. I can't believe you're involving the whole family in this. The more, the merrier, Beth. Now grab an ass blasting suit and let's go. They all continue ass blasting, laughing uncontrollably, covered in poop. The chaos finally slows down, and they stand amidst the aftermath, covered in a mix of poop and joyous laughter. Well, Morty, I gotta say, that was one hell of an ass blasting adventure. I can't believe I'm saying this, but yeah, Rick, it was strangely exhilarating. They all walk away, leaving the city behind, forever changed. So, Morty, what's next on the ass blasting agenda? Rick, please, let's just never speak of ass blasting again. Fair enough, Morty. But remember, in this dimension, we'll always be known as the legendary AS's Blaster Generals. Oh god, I think I need therapy. Therapy is for the weak, Morty. Embrace the ass blasting. Morty, we're going on a wild ride tonight. Oh boy, here we go again. Can't we just have a regular, normal day for once? Morty, you know the deal. Normal is boring, and you're my sidekick on these ridiculously dangerous adventures. Well, I'm tired of it, Rick. I'm sick of the gross monsters, the crazy planets, and the constant peril. Morty, you're just overreacting. Now buckle up. We're about to jump into a dimension where pizzas rule the world. Oh, really? Pizzas? Yeah, Morty, pizzas. 
pepperoni politicians, anchovy accountants, and a supreme ruler made entirely out of pineapple. It's a cheesy masterpiece. I can't take it anymore, Rick. I just want a break from all this madness. Fine, fine, Morty. We won't go on any adventures for a while. Just remember, you asked for it. Thank you, Rick. That means a lot. Scene shifts to the Smith family dinner table. So, Rick, anything interesting happening lately? Ah, oh, nothing much. Just discovered a universe where everyone is a talking purple hair cartoon character. They were all obsessed with kale smoothies. Weird, right? Excitedly, oh, really? That sounds fascinating. Jerry, don't encourage him. You know what happened last time he brought something like that into our lives. Smirking. Yeah, you remember that, Beth? Come on. It ended up with us riding into space on a giant alien amoeba. Good times. Can we just have a normal dinner conversation for once? Like how school was, or what's on TV? Morty, we're not even sure if this reality really exists, so does it even matter? Exasperated. You know what, Rick? Forget it. I'm out of here. Scene shifts to Morty's room. Purple hair cartoon character. Hey, Morty, I heard you're sick of adventures. Well, can I interest you in a thrilling journey to the intergalactic fashion show? Confused? Seriously? A fashion show? Purple hair cartoon character. Trust me, Morty, it's gonna be out of this world. Literally. I mean, we're talking alien models, holographic outfits, and a runway that stretches across Jupiter. Pausing. All right, fine. I guess a fashion show could be a welcome change of pace. Scene shifts to the intergalactic fashion show. In awe, well, this is actually pretty cool. Purple hair cartoon character, see, Morty, I told you it'd be exciting. Yeah, I guess you were right. It's nice to have a break from all the danger and chaos for once. Scene shifts to Rick at home, creating a contraption. Morty may think he's done with adventures, but this reality's just too dull without him. Time to shake things up a bit. Scene shifts back to Morty at the fashion show. Suspicious, wait a minute. Why are these fashion models looking at me like that? Purple hair cartoon character. Morty, they think you're the chosen one who will save their universe from a fashion crisis. Oh, come on, really? I can't catch a break. Scene shifts to Beth and Jerry at home, arguing. Jerry, why did you let Rick talk you into going on another adventure? I didn't think it would be this hectic, Beth. I just wanted to impress you. Sighs, Jerry, when will you learn? Rick's idea of impressing someone is bringing them to a dimension where everything's made of lasagna. Scene shifts back to Morty, fighting off rogue fashion models. Great, just great. Now I'm getting attacked by walking, talking coat hangers. Purple hair cartoon character. Morty, use that purple jacket you're wearing. It's your secret weapon. Sarcastic. Oh yeah, sure. My purple jacket will save the day. Why not? Scene shifts to Rick, finishing his contraption. All right. Time to bring Morty back to his senses and back to adventures. Scene shifts back to Morty, suddenly realizing his true calling. You know what? I may be sick of adventures, but I won't let these ridiculous fashion models stop me. Scene shifts to Rick, activating his contraption. Morty, brace yourself. We're about to embark on the craziest adventure yet. Scene shifts to Morty, now armed with his purple jacket, fighting off villains alongside Rick. Let's do this, Rick! Adventure time, baby! Scene shifts to a victorious Morty, standing amidst destruction. You know what, Rick? Maybe adventures aren't so bad after all. They're like a crazy roller coaster ride with extra vomit. Laughs. That's the spirit, Morty. Now, let's find a planet made entirely out of nachos and guacamole. Scene fades out with a mischievous tune playing. All right, Morty, buckle up. We're about to travel to a dimension where everyone's face is green and they all wear red jackets. Oh, geez, Rick, that sounds strange. Can't we just go somewhere normal for once? Normal, Morty, normal is my nightmare. 
we're going to have an interdimensional adventure that'll blow your tiny, harmonious mind. Whining. Ah, uh, Rick? Can I come too? I mean, I could use a break from my mundane life. Guys, fine, Jerry. You can tag along, but just try not to mess everything up like you always do. Hey guys, can I join too? I could use a break from school. Plus, green-faced people sound super Instagram-worthy. Summer, I'm trying to save the universe here, not help you gain followers. But fine, you can come. They all step through a portal and arrive in the green-faced dimension. Green-faced character, sarcastically, oh great, more outsiders, just what we needed. Look Morty, they've never seen outsiders like us before. This is an opportunity to impress them with our genius. Oh, Rick, I don't know about this. They look pretty hostile. Hostile? Morty, you worry too much. Just follow my lead and everything will be fine. Green-faced character approaches, pointing at Rick. Green-faced character, who the hell does this pompous spiky-haired prick think he is? Smirking? Oh, just a genius who can turn your entire existence into a joke with a flick of his wrist. Green-faced character, is that so? Well, let's see what you got, big shot. Rick activates his portal gun, opens a portal beneath the green-faced character, and sends him flying into a ridiculous, colorful dimension. Rick, that was insane. You really showed him. Chuckling. Morty, I always have a trick up my lab coat. Now, let's explore this bizarre dimension and find a way back home. They wander through the dimension encountering various zany characters and mind-bending situations. Excitedly, look at that creature. It's like a mix between a unicorn and a toaster. Annoyed, can we just find a way out of here already? I miss my boring, ordinary life. Morty catches a glimpse of a green-faced girl with red hair and falls instantly in love. Whoa, Rick, look at that girl. She's like a melody in my head. Oh boy, Morty's got himself a crush. Just try not to embarrass yourself too much, kid. Morty nervously approaches the green-faced girl. Hi, I'm Morty. I think you're, uh, really cool, considering you've got a green face and all. Green-faced girl, laughs, Morty, you're cute. Want to come explore this dimension with me? Blushing, yeah, that would be, uh, totally awesome. Rick, Summer, and Jerry share looks of disbelief as Morty and the green-faced girl walk off hand in hand. Well, I guess even Morty can find love in the weirdest of dimensions. Smirking. Love, Jerry, don't be ridiculous. That girl's probably just using him for his interdimensional charm. Giggling? Yeah, well, at least someone's having fun on this insane adventure. Rick, Summer, and Jerry continue their exploration while Morty enjoys his newfound romance in the twisted dimension.
Hey Morty, have you seen that new reality show, Jerry's Fuckhead Adventures? Can't believe that idiot got his own TV show. Yeah, Rick, it's crazy. But you know what's even crazier? I'm homeless now, Rick. Homeless. Well, Morty, maybe being homeless will finally teach you some responsibility. Oh great, just what I need, another reason to lose sleep. Insomnia doesn't come with a snooze button, you know. Ah, mom, can we not talk about your insomnia right now? I have my own problems. Like what, Summer? Oh, let me guess, another failed relationship? No, mom, it's actually about this crazy dream I had last night. I was in this weird alternate dimension with a talking cat and a dog wearing sunglasses. Alternate dimensions, huh? That gives me an idea. Morty, grab your portal gun. We're going on an adventure. But Rick, I'm homeless now. How can I go on an adventure? Simple, Morty. We'll just hop to a dimension where you're not homeless. Problem solved. Great, now you're encouraging his reckless behavior? I'm starting to think you're a bad influence on him, Rick. Oh please, Beth. You'll never find a better role model than me. Okay, can we focus on my dream for a second? It was so vivid, and there were these strange pink and green lights everywhere. Pink and green lights, you say? That sounds like a psychedelic rave party dimension. Morty, set the portal for dimension R69. Oh, okay, but you know I'm homeless, right? We'll figure it out later, Morty. Right now, we've got a party to crash. Scene changes to the psychedelic rave party dimension with a cat and a dog in the background. Whoa, Morty, this place is wild. Look at those colors, it's like a unicorn threw up over here. Yeah, it's pretty crazy, Rick. But can we find a way for me to not be homeless now? Sure thing, Morty. Just look for a dimension where you bought Bitcoin five years ago and become a millionaire. It's statistically improbable, but we'll find it. You know, Rick, I've always wondered why you never use your scientific genius to solve actual problems instead of going on these ridiculous adventures. Because, Beth, real problems are boring. Plus, I'm more likely to find a solution to homelessness in an alternate dimension than here. Guys, focus. I think I see the dog from my dream. Hey, doggy, what's your deal? Dog. Woof woof, man. Just chillin' here, enjoying the vibes and the cat's sick dance moves. Woof. Cat. Meow. Thanks for noticing, Summer. Just doing my thing on the dance floor. Meow. You know what, Rick? You may be cancelled on TV, but you're still a genius. Let's find Morty a way out of homelessness. That's the spirit, Beth. Morty, hold on tight, we're heading to the dimension of instant wealth. Scene ends with the character stepping through a portal to an unknown dimension, leaving behind a psychedelic rave party. Hey Morty, you worthless sack of human garbage. Find anything useful in the trash today? You know, Rick, it's really hard to find useful stuff in dumpsters when you're busy being homeless. Homeless? Ha, ah, that's just an excuse for being lazy, Morty. Lazy? You're dead now, Rick. I saw you keel over after calling Jerry a fuckhead. Yeah, well, it's not my fault his idiocy is contagious. Besides, being dead is overrated. Can you two morons keep it down? I can't sleep with all this bickering. Yeah, Beth's insomnia is getting worse. Can't we find a solution, Rick? Oh great, now we're all insomniacs. Maybe I can cobble together an invention to knock you all out. Knock us out? Yeah, right. Like you ever do anything useful, Rick. Listen here, Jerry, if you want to keep both your fish and my foot out of your mouth, I suggest you shut your dumb face. Whoa, Rick, calm down. Let's focus on helping Beth with her insomnia, okay? Fine, Morty. We'll find a solution for Beth's precious beauty sleep. But no promises, you little shit. Can't believe I'm stuck with you people for eternity. Will someone please find a way to help me sleep? Alright, fine. I'll make an Insomnium Destroyer 5000, but it requires a rare ingredient. What's the ingredient, Rick? I'll get it for you. 
You think you're capable of fetching it? It's a diamond encrusted fish from the abyssal depths of Neptune. A diamond encrusted fish? Wow, this conspiracy goes deeper than I thought. Don't overthink it, Jerry. Just go get the damn fish and let's get this over with. I can't believe I'm saying this, but Jerry, go fetch that fish so I can finally get some sleep. Fine, I'll do it. But I better be appreciated for my heroic fish fetching skills. Heroic, Jerry, you couldn't find your own ass with a map and a flashlight. Just watch me, Rick. I'll prove you wrong. Scene transitions to Jerry attempting to swim in the dark depths of Neptune. Gurgling. Why did I agree to this? This fish better be worth it. Scene transitions back to the Smith household. I can't believe Jerry actually did it. He's back, with a fish, in his mouth. Jerry, why is there a fish in your mouth? What happened down there? Muffled. Long story, Beth. But I got the damn fish, and that's what matters. Well, I'll be damned. Jerry really pulled through. Maybe he's not a total loser after all. I'm just glad we can finally put this insomnia madness to rest. Yeah, but how are we going to get that fish out of Jerry's mouth? Muffled. Uh guys, a little help here? Turns out fish have pretty sharp teeth. The Smith family gathers around Jerry, attempting to remove the fish from his mouth, as chaos and hilarity ensue. Hey Morty, check out these dinguses standing next to a demon with a sword and a demon head. You ever seen a more statistically improbable scenario? Ah, uh, Rick, I don't think we should mess with demons, you know? They're pretty dangerous. Morty, relax, I've dealt with demons more times than you've blinked. Let's see what these chumps are up to. I can't believe they gave me a sword. I'm gonna slay this demon and show Beth I'm a real man. Jerry, you couldn't slay a fly. Just give me the damn sword, you'll cut your own foot off. Oh, so now you're belittling me, Beth? You know what, I've had enough of your condescending crap. Smirking. Looks like Jerry's finally growing a pair, just not the ones he wishes he had. Can we just stop arguing and get this over with? I've got better things to do than watch Dad make a fool of himself. Demon. Mortals, prepare to face my wrath. Rick, shouldn't we maybe, I don't know, run or something? Aw, oh, Morty, we'll just stand here and watch the drama unfold. Could be entertaining. Enraged, that's it. I'm burning this place down. What? Jerry, you can't burn down a Walmart. Are you insane? You think I'm insane? You married a mad scientist, Beth. Chuckling. Ha, oh, got him. Can we please focus on the demon about to kill us all? Demon, prepare to die, foolish mortals. Jerry, do something. Panicking. Okay, okay, I got it. Lights a match. Burn, Walmart, burn. Oh great job, Jerry. Now you've pissed off the demon even more. Rick, what do we do? Morty, grab the sword and swing it at the demon. It's our only shot. But I'm not, like, trained in sword fighting or anything. Don't worry, Morty. It's just like a video game. Swing and hope for the best. I can't believe I burned down a Walmart. I'm going to jail. That's the least of your worries right now, Jerry. Morty, just swing the sword already. Nervously, okay, here goes nothing. Swings the sword clumsily. Demon, Arg, you actually managed to hit me. This is highly inconvenient. 
Nice job, Morty. Now let's finish this before we all end up in demon hell. Jerry, you're an idiot, but right now, I'll take any help we can get. I may be an idiot, but at least I'm an idiot with a burning Walmart. Demon, the power of the demon head will consume you all. Not if we have anything to say about it. Morty, stab the demon. Gaining confidence. You got it, Rick. Lunges at the demon with the sword, defeating it. Oh my god, we actually did it. We survived. And I burned down a Walmart, don't forget that. Jerry, please, just stop talking. Well, another day, another callback to the time my son-in-law burned down a Walmart. Life sure is crazy, huh? Yeah, Rick, you said it. Fuming, can you believe this, Beth? That poster of the genius scientist with the beard and glasses? Everyone thinks he's some kind of goddamn hero. Jerry, calm down. Who cares about some poster? It's just a gimmick. Gimmick? He's stealing my thunder. I went to a convention and nobody even noticed me. They were all obsessed with him. Ah, oh, guys, sorry to interrupt, but can we talk about the fact that I'm living in a cardboard box now? What happened to our house? Or ye house hey as we destroyed day. Get over it, Morty. Rick, this is serious. That scientist is a fraud. I did some research on him, and all his theories are complete gibberish. Jerry, let it go. We have bigger problems. I haven't slept in days, and it's driving me insane. I've way hog sleep a, ed bay. Maybe a uye ouche at gay omie help a. No, no. This cannot stand. I won't let that imposter ruin my reputation. Ah, uh, Rick, can't you do something? Like, you know, sciencey stuff? Ante ouch me athe, I've already a rite. Well, maybe we should expose him ourselves. Morty, get our spaceship ready. But I don't even have a home anymore, Jerry. Jerry, this is ridiculous. Can't we just ignore it? Ignore it? Beth. My entire existence is being invalidated by a man on a poster. I have to do something. I weigh an okay elfe uye with a eyes a one pay. I dees way away ushing pray up way. I don't care, Rick. We're going to confront him, and he will rue the day he stole my spotlight. I can't believe I'm saying this, but maybe we should go with Jerry on this. Just to shut him up. Inge Bay, Ronto Bay. Okay, but can we at least figure out where I'm gonna live after this? Morty, you can stay at my place, but only if you promise not to touch anything. Let's just go, Jerry. I hope this ridiculous adventure will put an end to this obsession of yours. I'm way in a ID spay at the Urson pay. We are going to expose him, no matter what it takes. This is the beginning of the end for that fake scientist. I guess homelessness is a small price to pay for some family drama, huh? USDJ, Ailer Bay, USDJ Orne Inkspa. This is going to be a long and ridiculous day.
All right, Morty, listen up. We're in for a wild ride today. I've invented a machine that merges cartoon characters with real life. Just imagine the possibilities. Oh, Rick, I don't know about this. It sounds like it could go horribly wrong. Morty, when have my inventions ever gone right? Now hold this sign with a mouse and a cat in front of a piano and a mouse. We're about to mix some tunes, baby. Scene shifts to an animated world where the merge is taking place. Ie ma onel mise ande in rage day. Ie ana clear say understand a y e ite happen a otai imhe. Oh great, Jerry's speaking in pig Latin now. Just when I thought he couldn't get any more ridiculous. Rick, what's going on? Are these cartoon characters taking over our world? Oh, Morty, they're just causing a bit of chaos. We'll fix it soon enough. Right after I finish this flamethrower to take care of Jerry's insomnia. Owe are uye uking fe ingre agnode? Don't mind him, Morty. Let's go wrangle some cartoon mayhem. As they roam the animated world, they encounter various merged characters. Look, Morty, there's Tom and Jerry merged with the Roadrunner and Wile E. Coyote. I bet they're having a blast. Actually, Rick, I think they're trying to chase us. Scene shifts to an intense chase as Tom and Jerry, mixed with Roadrunner and Wile E. Coyote, pursue Rick and Morty. Morty, grab the portal gun. We need to get back to our reality before these cartoon psychos catch up to us. I can't find it, Rick. It must have fallen out during the chase. Damn it, Morty, keep running. We'll figure something out. Just as Tom and Jerry start closing in, they stumble upon the portal gun. Rick, look, I found it. Great job, Morty, now let's get out of here. They teleport back to their reality. Phew, that was close, Morty. We narrowly avoided a bloody merger of cartoon characters. I mean, damn, could have turned out like a Saturday morning massacre. Yeah, Rick, that was insane. I'm just glad we made it back in one piece. Well, Morty, at least we learned one thing today. Mixing cartoons with the real world? Not as fun as it sounds. Morty, grab your portal gun. We're about to encounter a situation so statistically improbable, it makes winning the Mega Flex lottery seem like child's play. Ah, uh, Rick, what are we dealing with this time? Well, Morty, brace yourself for the unexpected. We're going to be sucked into Jerry's messed up life. Seriously? I thought we were done with Jerry's nonsense. Oh, Morty, life has a funny way of dragging you back into the abyss of insanity. Prepare for the worst. Scene shifts to Jerry, staring at the camera with a surprised look on his face. Why does everything bizarre always happen to me? First, I lose my job, then my house, and now my sanity. Well, jokes on them, I never had sanity to begin with. Scene shifts to Jerry walking the streets, looking enraged and sleep deprived. Insomnia, the cherry on top of my miserable life. I can't sleep, Morty. I haven't slept in days, and my life is falling apart. Rick and Morty appear through a portal. Jerry, get a grip. We're here to help you, but you need to simmer down and stop being an absolute Jerry. Oh great, the genius and the boy wonder have arrived. What's your grand plan, Rick? I plan? I'm glad you asked, Jerry. I've prepared a scientifically concocted insomnia potion that'll knock you out for days. Are you trying to poison me? Of course not. You buffoon. It's perfectly safe. Just a mix of interdimensional chemicals and a hint of existential dread. Wait, does that mean it'll give Jerry more nightmares? Morty, you're missing the bigger picture here. Jerry already lives in a waking nightmare. This potion will give him a proper rest, even if it means facing some weird-ass dreams. Fine, give it to me. I'll take my chances. Can't get any worse than my real life, right? Rick hands Jerry the potion, and he chugs it down. Coughs. All right, it's kicking in now. Scene progresses with quick cuts of Jerry's wacky dream sequence, filled with obscure pop culture references, bizarre creatures, and an existential crisis montage. 
wakes up in a cold sweat. Oh, good lord. That was the most mind-bending, gut-wrenching dream I've ever had. Was it worse than real life, though? Actually, no. It made my real life look like a walk in the park, which says a lot. See, Jerry, sometimes you just need a little perspective to appreciate how terrible your life truly is. Thanks, Rick. I guess it's all a matter of perspective. Maybe I should stop complaining and start embracing the weirdness. Scene concludes with Jerry walking down the street, embracing his newfound weirdness while Rick and Morty observe. Well, Morty, I'd say that was a job well done. We saved Jerry's sanity and gave him a taste of true insanity. Everyone wins. I guess so, Rick. But can we avoid him for a while? My brain can only handle so much Jerry. Don't worry, Morty. I'm sure some other cosmic catastrophe will distract us soon enough. Just hang in there, buddy.
Hey, chef, what's for dinner? Chef, slop, slime. Slop, slime? Are you kidding me? Chef, no joke, Morty. Tonight, we're going all out. But chef, you're a renowned culinary expert. Are you really serving slop and slime? Chef, I know it sounds crazy, but trust me on this. It's the most avant-garde dish you'll ever taste. All right, chef, I'll give it a shot. Can't be worse than that time with the alien catfish. Chef, that was an accident, Morty. Let's not bring that up. Fair enough. So, how did you even come up with this concoction? Chef, it was a moment of inspiration mixed with desperation. I was low on ingredients and had to improvise. Well, I guess I'll take your word for it. Just make sure it won't turn my insides into goo. Chef, fear not, Morty. This dish will revolutionize the culinary world. You'll be begging for seconds. All right, chef, hit me with it. Let's see what this so-called masterpiece tastes like. Chef, here we go. Pours the slop and slime into a bowl. It looks interesting. Chef, bon appetit, Morty. Takes a hesitant bite, asterisk, oh, my. This is incredible. Chef, I told you, Morty. The flavors, the textures, it's like a symphony in your mouth. I can't believe it. This slop and slime are the best things I've ever tasted. Chef, I knew you'd come around. This is the future of gastronomy. Chef, you've truly outdone yourself. This dish is mind-blowing. Chef, thank you, Morty. I'm glad you appreciate my culinary genius. I apologize for doubting you, Chef. This is a masterpiece. Chef, no hard feelings, Morty. Now, let's savor the flavors of this revolutionary slop and slime. I never thought I'd say this, but I can't wait to have seconds of slop and slime. Chef, that's the spirit, Morty. Embrace the absurdity and enjoy the deliciousness. Cheers to slop and slime, chef. Cheers to bizarre culinary experiences. Kicking the soccer ball, yeah. Take that, you stupid ball. Audience member one, Morty, you're playing football, not soccer. Laughs, football, soccer, who gives a damn? As long as I can kick this ball and impress the ladies. Audience member two, Morty, you're not impressing anyone with those weak attempts. Show us what you got. Oh, you think I can't impress you with my moves? Watch this. Audience gasps as Morty performs a series of acrobatic kicks and flips. Audience member three, whoa, did he just do a triple backflip midair? Audience member four, Morty, you're a football god. Damn right I am. You think I can't handle the pressure? Watch me juggle this ball. Morty starts juggling the ball effortlessly, bouncing it off his head, knees, and even his butt. Audience member five, this guy's out of control. Audience member six, I can't believe what I'm seeing. Grinning, you know what's even more impressive? Watch this. Morty kicks the ball high into the air, jumps up, and performs a perfect mid-air bicycle kick. Audience member 7, holy shit, did he just defy gravity? Audience member 8, Morty's a legend, this has never been seen before. Landing gracefully, y'all thought I was just an average guy, huh? Well, I'm not just average, I'm extraordinary. Audience member 9, 
Morty, you've just changed the game of football forever. Audience member 10. We'll be talking about this epic display for generations to come. Bowing, thank you, thank you. I'm here all day, folks. Audience erupts into applause and cheers. Audience member 11. Morty, you're a goddamn genius. Audience member 12. I'm quitting my job and dedicating my life to worshipping Morty. Smirking, well, I guess you could say I'm the messy of football. Audience laughs and cheers louder. Audience member 1. Morty, what's next for you? World Cup? Champions League? Winks, how about a one-on-one -on -one match with the devil himself? I'm ready for anything. The crowd cheers even louder as Morty continues to bask in his newfound fame and glory.
Well, Morty, looks like we're in for another ludicrous adventure. Jeez, Rick, can't we just have a normal day for once? Normal is overrated, Morty. We're going where no man has gone before. Asterisk enters the room, what are you two up to now? Oh great, I see you've dragged Jerry into another one of your schemes. Relax, Beth, this is gonna be the adventure of a lifetime. Adventure? Count me in. Seriously, Rick? What are we doing this time? Points at a robot sitting on the table. We're going to sell Robot Love Island. Robot Love Island? What the hell is that? Simple concept, Jerry. Robots fall in love, and one lucky buyer gets to watch it all unfold. I don't even want to know how you came up with that idea, Rick. Trust me, Morty, it's pure genius. I don't know, guys, this sounds a bit unethical. Yeah, isn't that kind of robots exploiting? What about their rights? Oh please, Jerry, like they care. It's just a bunch of circuits. Look, I'm not one to judge, but isn't this just selling electronic prostitution? Oh, Summer, cool it with the judgments. It's all just good old-fashioned robotic romance. Even if we go along with this, how are we going to find robot couples? That's where the robot on the table comes in. He's my secret matchmaker. So, we're just gonna sit here and watch robots make out? It's disgusting. I won't have it in my house. Oh, don't worry, Jerry. We'll make sure the robots are anatomically correct. Asterisk cringes, I did not need that visual, Rick. Can't believe I'm saying this, but I think I'm with Jerry on this one. It feels wrong. Look, you guys can stay here with your morals. I'm taking this opportunity to make a quick buck. Fine, do what you want, but don't involve the rest of us. Oh, I'm sure you'll all come crawling back when you see how much money we'll make. You really think people will pay to watch robots mating? Summer, you underestimate the depravity of reality TV watchers. Asterisk size fine, count me in. I can always use a little extra cash. I can't believe I'm about to say this, but I'm in too. Let's get this over with. That's the spirit. Robot Love Island coming soon to a TV near you. The family sits together as the robot on the table clicks a button, initiating the start of this bizarre and morally ambiguous adventure. All right, Morty, time to dig in. This cake is gonna blow our minds. Whoa, Rick, look at that green light above the cake. What do you think it is? It's probably just some interdimensional portal or something, Morty. I'm sure it's nothing to worry about. Are you sure, Rick? It looks kinda dangerous. Don't be such a pussy, Morty. Here, pass me a slice. As Rick takes a bite of the cake, the green light intensifies, and they both get sucked into a weird cartoon world. Holy shit, Morty, we're in some alternate dimension. And look, it's Garfield. Garfield? Oh, I thought he was just a cartoon character. Not anymore, Morty. In this dimension, Garfield is real and he's one hungry motherfucker. Garfield, meow, I'm gonna eat all your food, you pathetic little shits. John, not so fast, Garfield. I've had enough of your laziness and gluttony. It's time to put an end to it. Rick and Morty watch in awe as John starts fighting Garfield, throwing punches and kicks. This is fucking insane, Morty. John is kicking Garfield's ass. Yeah, Rick. Who would have thought John had it in him? Garfield. Do you think you can take me down, John? I'll rip you apart, you skinny prick. John. Bring it on, you fat furry fuck. The fight between John and Garfield becomes even more intense, with punches and insults flying. Morty, this is turning into a real fucking bloodbath. I didn't sign up for this, Rick. We need to find a way out of here. Just as Rick and Morty panic, the green light reappears and transports them back to their own dimension. 
Phew, that was a close one, Morty. I don't think I'll ever look at Garfield the same way again. Yeah, me neither, Rick. But hey, at least we got a crazy story to tell. Let's never mess with green lights on cakes again. They both laugh and continue watching TV, completely unfazed by the bizarre adventure they just had. Smirking. All right, Morty, listen up. We're here to have some goddamn fun. I've got a crazy adventure planned for us today. Nervously, ah, uh, Rick, are you sure this is safe? Last time we ended up in a dimension ruled by horny aliens. Dismissively, safety is for losers, Morty. We're going to the most dangerous dimension in the entire multiverse, where everything is turned up to 11. Panicking, Rick, I don't know about this, man. My anxiety levels are off the charts right now. Rolling his eyes. Anxiety shmanxiety, Morty. Buck up, you little prick. We're going to a dimension where everyone communicates through violent face slaps. No talking, just slapping. Terrified, are you insane, Rick? We're gonna get our faces slapped into oblivion. Grinning, that's the spirit, Morty. Now, put on this face protector and get ready for some extreme facial gymnastics. Hesitant. Rick, I really don't think I can handle this. Maybe we should just go back home and watch TV. Talking. Oh, poor little Morty, afraid of a few slaps. Grow a pair, Morty. We're too far into this to turn back now. Whimpering. Okay, okay. I'll do it. Just promise me we won't get killed. Sarcastically. Sure thing, Morty. As long as you don't mind a few bruises and a shattered self-esteem. Pleadingly. Can't we go back to the dimension with the talking hamsters instead? Snapping. No, Morty. We're doing this and that's final. Quit being such a wuss. Defeated. Fine, Rick. Let's get this over with. They enter the interdimensional portal and find themselves in a chaotic cityscape. <laughs> 